So 6.5 Media continues its conversations with Microsoft. We have Brandon Dixon. Brandon, you're the partner group product manager for Copilot for Security. Tell us a little bit about what you do on a daily basis. A uh, big portion of my job is building this product that we have now, so developing Copilot for Security and identifying uh, what it is that we're going to ship. Mm -hmm. And so shipping a product at Microsoft takes a, a lot of effort, so it's a lot of customer conversations, mm -hmm. a lot of conversations internally to form alignment, and then of course um, you know, just the organizational aspect of, of getting that product launched and then measuring the overall success and health of it. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's jump into it. You know, there's a lot of whitewashing going on with Gen AI. Everyone's claiming it. I'm wondering, from your perspective, how is Microsoft going to differentiate its Copilot for Security solution relative to the competition out there? Well, I think for us, one of the advantages that we have at Microsoft is this the amount of data that we have. Mm -hmm. And so we, we see a lot of attacks, uh, trillions of signals on a daily basis, and that helps form the knowledge that we have about threat actors, and then that informs the uh, detections that we write to make customers more uh, safe. And so the product itself leverages all of that information and is able to answer questions in natural language to help people uh, do their jobs better. And what I love about the product and what we've done is we have a solution that's visionary, where it's led by natural language, and then we've also integrated generative AI into all of our existing product mm -hmm. offerings. So if you're already familiar with them, you've made your investments, you've done your training, uh, you're comfortable in those interfaces, we want to meet you where you are. And we think that that in and of itself is a big differentiator as well because we have solutions across all of the different parts of security. Yeah, you know, Chris and I were just in a demo we and we saw the integration with uh, Microsoft Word. And you're right, I mean, that's going to reduce the friction and make it that much easier and accessible, I believe, for customers to leverage the power of Gen AI. Yeah, yeah, and I think kind of building on that concept, I definitely agree. Being able to see in action the integration of Microsoft Copilot for security with some of the other products has been really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and Brandon, just understanding kind of your role and really kind of driving the product itself, can you talk a little bit about the decision to offer Copilot for security standalone, yeah. um, but also allow it to be embedded you know, with other products? Just a little bit more context there. Sure. So with any new technology, there's uh, the adoption curve, or the, mm -hmm. the, the need to get educated on how to best use it. And one of the things that we have observed is that we don't want to disrupt uh, a customer's existing workflow. So mm -hmm. as I mentioned, we have a rich suite of security products today that people know, love, and routinely use to defend their organization. And one of the, by, by integrating generative AI into those workflows, and doing it in a purpose-driven manner, we're able to complement the existing processes they have and make their overall experience better. The reason why we did the separate standalone experience is because generative AI introduces a new way of working that we've previously not had. Mm -hmm. So when we think about specialized tools, that requires training and understanding some level of expertise. And one of the powerful aspects of generative AI is the fact that using natural language, you can query the system and you can get back responses in natural language. And so when we thought about that, there was an opportunity to reimagine what that user interface would look like, what that experience would look like. And we could have put that inside of our existing product offerings, but we felt that that might take away from the existing process and training that people had. We didn't want to distract them. We didn't want to put additional cognitive load for them to figure out how to prompt in those systems. We wanted to make it as easy as possible to get value with the solutions they had today, yet form a bridge to this new way of working mm -hmm. for people that are eager to understand what that might look like and how to, to start educating themselves to it, that they could begin doing it that way. I think that's super smart. It's like you're putting the training wheels on things, right. right, to that's kind right. of ease people into it. You know, and what's really exciting about generative AI, and I like to refer to it as like, it's a gold rush, right? I think it's a gold rush for, uh, for defenders, mm -hmm. but it can be a gold rush for bad actors as well, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, being a double-edged sword, it can be used for good and, and not so good. Um, but to double click on kind of the first question I asked you around differentiation, and certainly the integration is key from my perspective, and that really positions Microsoft for success. But if you were to think, I mean, is there one particular transformative feature that can really just sort of change the way that people manage security? I mean, I think from a, from a product perspective, it is that natural language ability. Mm -hmm. When I think about 
the talent shortage that we have across cybersecurity, and I was once a, an, an analyst doing that work, there's a tremendous amount of pressure of people who are in the job today to, to be successful, to find the true positives, to find the threat actors, to respond as quickly as possible. Uh, and with that stress, uh, you know, just comes people leaving positions or mm -hmm. institutional knowledge going away. That's, when those people leave those positions, that, that leaves a gap. And we already have a, a big gap. And so I see that the opportunity, the biggest feature in a way is the natural language aspect. It's that you don't have to be a subject matter expert per se to form a question. Mm -hmm. And in particular, the feature that I, I think I love most about Copilot for Security is the fact that we take that natural language and then we stitch it together in something called a prompt book. And that prompt book is meant to achieve a workflow. So for instance, I might have an incident that I need to triage. And as an analyst, I know that initially I want the summary, I want all the entities involved that might involve users, devices, uh, technical artifacts. And there's commonly a process where analysts would go and enrich that information to understand more details about it. This is a common and repetitive task mm -hmm. that language models can help assist with. So what we've done with prompt books is we've taken the power of natural language, articulating the steps that we want to achieve, we stitch them together, and then we can create these automated workflows so that somebody with very little experience can plug in an incident ID yeah and have it go and automatically triage and write the report for them at the end. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, when I think of um, a blueprint, uh, when you look at, you know, network operators and that sort of thing. I think one of the challenges with, uh, with security, you mentioned the, the skill shortage. Um, when you move down market, and when I speak with a lot of small to mid-sized customers, oftentimes the NetOps teams are managing the security operations, right? So if you can make it easier and more intuitive, I think you're gonna get um, better efficacy and that sort of thing from, from a security solution. Yeah, for sure. And, and I mean, we talk about security a lot. I mentioned incidents, but like the way we've positioned Copilot for security, it's also applicable to those in an IT-based role. Mm -hmm. So I mean, imagine a, a case where you have uh, conditional access policies across your organization. Maybe somebody didn't update their device and now they're locked out of their account. Mm -hmm. This is a common thing that happens across enterprises who have these policies rolled out. And that creates help desk tickets, right? I'm locked out of my account. Can you please help me figure out how to get access? And what it ends up being is like that help desk person has to go and triage, okay, they didn't update their system and they need to apply this patch. But there's a, there's a paradigm there where we can help, instead of escalating to an IT person that otherwise would have their time wasted, mm -hmm. could we enable that help desk person to take the device ID, put it into something like Copilot for security and say, Tell me the status of this device, whether it's compliant or not compliant, and give me the reasons why it may not be compliant and explain them out in full detail. And then tell me the next steps that I would need to take as a user to solve this problem. Additionally, tell me the next steps that I would need to take as a practitioner behind the scenes to help resolve this for the user. So there's this incredible capability of, of being able to, in a way, bring a new set of skills that otherwise may have been out of reach. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just stop at security. It, it goes across compliance, identity, and management. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to service Help all of Help desk those. resolution, you yeah. know, faster yeah. time to resolution, and that's super powerful. That frees up, you know, IT, you know, net, op, net op, sec ops to do more value-added support for the lines of businesses, right? Yeah, yeah, I think the only other comment that I would kind of just add here is, you know, it definitely, contributes to that saying that, you know, the defender has to be correct every time, but the attacker only has to be right once, right? right? So mm -hmm. I think in addition to this kind of, you know, efficiency, speeding time to resolution, it's also, you know, really just kind of empowering these teams to do their job better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So Brennan, thank you. This has been a really exciting conversation about generative yeah. AI. I know we could probably talk for, for quite some time on this, but maybe just to kind of, um, you know, summarize the conversation or kind of put a bow on it, if you will. When you think about this space, what excites you the most when you think about kind of that intersection point of generative AI with security? I think what excites me the most right now is the fact that we've been working with customers to get feedback on the product. Mm -hmm. And the feedback is overwhelmingly positive, that, that people are both utilizing the embedded experiences in the existing products we have and the standalone experience for this new way of working. And we're seeing positive results uh, even in its early development. So we have uh, novice or, or kind of folks that are a bit more seasoned uh, 
uh, you know, seeing up to 22% efficiency gains with 7% accuracy in tasks that they've historically done. Mm -hmm. And then overwhelmingly, like that, that positive sentiment is, is being reflected in the fact that 97% of the people that have leveraged the tool would continue using it. They, they actually enjoy using wow, it. Wow, that's yeah, powerful. That's Which is really yeah. interesting, right? Because like when I think about waking up in the morning, like, you know, you don't, uh, the, the first thing that comes to mind is not necessarily your SIM. It's not, that's always in, it, a delightful product, right? Like sure. it's, uh, it's, it's a security is a hard job. So hearing that from customers that they love using the product, that they're getting value and it's something tangible has, has immense value. Yeah, it's powerful. I mean, that just provides another tool in the toolbox for those SOC analysts to be more effective at what they do and, right. and you know, kind of be able to like stretch their capabilities and, uh, and their resources at the same time. So, hey, Brandon, thanks. It's been a great conversation. Yeah, thank you very, thanks very, so very much. much.